Hey guys, today in my washroom I have a Samsung WA40 J3000 AW, I think, that is not spinning. It works fine other than the fact it will not spin and we want to go try the diagnostic system in this to see what the heck's going on. This type of washer from Samsung does have a very easy to access diagnostic system that is fairly robust once you understand what the lights mean. However, it's also simple in the fact that you don't get a lot of modes or special things associated with it. You get codes and that's more or less it. So I want to show you today how to get into the diagnostic system as well as what all the blinking lights mean. And hopefully this will help you get your Samsung washer back up and running. Now, if you figure out what code it is and you don't know what to do, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and put a comment in the feed and I will try to figure this out for you because I do have the tech manual at, because I am a tech. So let's go ahead and show you how stupidly easy it is to work on this unit to get it into diagnostics. Please note that the following diagnostic code will only work for this type of Samsung washer. If you have a panel that is stainless steel or a different color, it may have a different button configuration. This type of diagnostic code will not work or at least I haven't tried it and I know that other Samsungs may work a little bit differently. The first thing we're going to do is simply make sure that the unit is plugged in and then we are going to hit the power button to turn it on. Once this is done, all we're going to do is press and hold the temp button until it starts to go into diagnostics. The manual says three seconds, I think it's lying. I think it takes about eight seconds, but we're gonna see. And there we go, we have entered its diagnostic system. This will show you the multiple combination of codes. Certain ones will be on entirely, and the ones that blink are the ones that are the actual code. So whatever is flashing corresponds to the code. If they're on, it may not mean anything at all. You can go through whatever failures and faults are in this washer by spinning the dial. Now, in the case of this washer, the only and last code is the hot and the cold. I have the tech manual with me, so what we are going to do is go through every possible code this machine has and what it could mean according to Samsung. So hopefully this list will help you out to get your Samsung washer, this one has a belt underneath, back up and running, and also some information about what we found out about this one, because we did actually fix it. These are the codes that could be flashing during the diagnostic and error code process, along with a list of possible causes to the codes. Once we go through all the basic error codes, I've included a technician's list of possible fixes from Samsung on all of these problems. According to the diagnostic system, there are a few problems that could have multiple styles of lights pop up, so please note that there may be more than one solution to a code, or even one problem that could have multiple codes associated with it. When it comes to codes and solutions, we are going to go through the codes pretty rapidly. So if you know which code it is, make sure to pause the video and give yourself more time to see what the solution is. But once we get through the codes, we're going to be reviewing, again, the factory authorized fixes on them, so many of these sheets are going to appear again slightly different soon. These are the suggested fixes and procedures for the stated problems on this unit from Samsung. If you aren't comfortable doing these steps, hire a tech to do them for you. Many of these things will require the utilization of a multimeter, but the cost of a good one, the one I use, is a fraction of a service call, so you may want to consider buying one, as well as a nice screwdriver. The ones I use in this video, as well as other videos, are in the description, and they work really well on fixing and solving a lot of problems on this type of washer, as well as many others. In a few moments, we are going to go over one of these codes, which is why I had to check error codes on this machine, which was the TMR sensor code, and it resulted in the machine refusing to spin at all during its cycle. If your code's different and you're stumped on it though, make sure to comment on the video and I will try to help you as best as I can figure it out.
Thanks so much for watching all of the diagnostics and troubleshooting problems with this type of Samsung washer so far. The one thing that I wanted to do once we got through this was to talk about why this machine wouldn't spin because it is something that's really common on these machines. The uh, TMR sensor code may be a little bit vague on what you're supposed to do and it was a very small issue on this that caused a very large problem and if someone would have wanted to call a repairman to fix this, it would have cost probably about $400, but we ended up getting it fixed for about four. And I wanna show you how he did it and some other possible issues that would cause this machine not to spin and then show up with a code that says it won't spin either. This is the underneath of this Samsung WA40 J3000 WA washer. This is slightly different than some of the other versions of this washer. It has a traditional motor and transmission system on it. Uh, there are some Samsungs that have like a large almost dinner plate, but still have this bracket. The fixes are actually pretty close to the same for both types. So this one has a motor, the other one doesn't, but you can still fix it or have the same code in a very similar pattern. Generally what's going to happen on this code is something in your component system, your shift actuator, your capacitor, or your TMR sensor have something bad going on with them. And traditionally with this type of washer, it's because it shakes and vibrates so much that a wire can come unhooked or simply severed. Let's go over some of the fault areas of this type of machine. One of the first areas you want to look at is this capacitor. The capacitor has two wires going to it, a blue wire and a red wire. I have seen in situations where the wires will be disconnected or severed. So you wanna make sure that you tug on the wires just a little bit and make sure that they are plugged in properly. Also, make sure that you look at the capacitor housing. Generally on a capacitor like this, if you notice that there's any part of it that has bubbled out or gone outside the casing, it is possible that the capacitor is bad. So make sure that the capacitor looks intact as well. Another area of concern is the shift actuator. This is powered by a uh, connection right here, and this is what enables your unit to shift from agitate to spin. This could go bad. If you need to check it, you can take the Molex connector off of the unit by taking this uh, plug out and then using a multimeter to inspect the resistance, the ohms resistance on this. I tested it on this machine and it was good. The suggested ohm range is between 1000 and 1100. I got about 1060 on this model, so it was okay. I also checked the shifter wire that's located just above the shift actuator. Sometimes this little wire can become damaged or destroyed. So you wanna tug on the wire and make sure that it's intact. Sometimes this can go bad and it needs replaced. Here's the actual shifter column right here. There is, uh, there's nothing wrong with this at all. And now we'll get to the actual issue that I had with this machine. It's very elusive and small. If you look at your unit on top here is your TMR sensor. This plastic shaft is a pain to get undone. However, this is where our problem was. You need to remove the large bracket here and then other components involved with the motor and the transmission itself to get to that TMR sensor. The TMR sensor is in a very difficult spot to videotape, so I had to resort to photos during the rest of this video since we already accomplished the repair and the test run of the unit. The TMR sensor is the white piece that is circled. A wire harness goes to the sensor which calculates the run speed of the motor. In our case, a wire had been snapped to the sensor causing it not to work. We had to remove all the components on the motor assembly that I mentioned earlier, take the plastic piece off via two screws, then solder the wires back onto the sensor. The item, this TMR sensor, is not sold by Samsung, unfortunately, so your only option is to solder it or buy the entire shifting assembly. Once the wire was repaired, we were able to run the unit with zero problems and it spun immediately 
on the test once a small wire was fixed. There was a lot of slack on the wire harness so it wasn't extremely difficult to fix other than removing the Molex harness and soldering and you could use a Molex plug remover. But we use tweezers to fix this in our situation. I appreciate you watching this video on how to pull up diagnostic codes on a Samsung top load washer. Again, if you don't have this sort of washing machine and it looks maybe something more like this one on the top, it will use a different diagnostic system to activate it. And we'll be doing a video on that probably in the near future. If you have any questions about washing machines or anything else with appliances, just make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. I actually check everything that gets commented, so maybe I can help you out, or someone else in the commenter can, uh, comment section can help you out too, because there's actually a lot of texts that watch this that I've seen, which I'm kind of surprised at. So we, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.